Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and I'd like to give a presentation today that I've altered just a slight little bit, uh, which is the one that I had given at the AAOM conference, the American Association of Orthopedic Medicine in Clearwater, Florida, this last week. Uh, it's really a, a great topic because it's a paradigm shift in how we treat the spine, trying to get rid of some of the nasty steroids. So again, we're really focusing here on how do we get rid of the high dose steroids that we kind of all know are a problem and uh, what do we replace them with when it comes to uh, epidural injections. Epidural injections, in case you don't know, are done to try to help irritated nerves in the spine. They're a very, very common treatment to try to help patients avoid surgery. Our process has always been pretty clear. We innovate in the lab, we perform clinical research, we track patients in our registry, we use data to guide treatment decisions, and we publish all of that. So much of the data you see here will be published soon in the peer-reviewed literature. And how did we get into this alternative for epidural steroid injections, what we call platelet lysate? Well, we got into this primarily because we were culturing cells and uh, we were using platelet lysate as a uh, very efficient substitute for other things that weren't as healthy for the cells. And long story short is we eventually got into injecting this around the spine. So what's commonly done now with orthobiologics, stem cells, PRP, et cetera, in patients with spinal disorders? Well, we have platelet-rich plasma and platelet-poor plasma being injected into the disc, and I'll tell you in a little bit why I think in some patients that could be a problem. We have platelet lysate, which is mostly our group of, our national group of doctors, uh, Regenix, who are doing this. Uh, we use platelet lysate for epidurals, for set injections, ligaments. We have same-day stem cell injections that go inside the disc and sometimes into facet joints. And then there are cultured stem cells like the process we use down in Grand Cayman to get rid of disc bulges, but that's fairly rare uh, out there. So there's good basic science to support the concept that platelet growth factors can help nerves. And again, I'm gonna keep this at a little higher patient point of view, but you can dig deeper at any time by reading any of these references. And one of the things that's important to note is what we're talking about here is a little different than some of the regenerative medicine options out there. Many of the regenerative medicine options for the spine have focused on injecting into the disc. And there's nothing wrong with that when that needs to be done. But what we're seeing is oftentimes it doesn't need to be done. And injecting into the disc is a much more invasive type treatment. So we try to always pick the least invasive treatment, in this case, an epidural injection that will help the patient. The big issue, I think, with injecting platelet-rich plasma intradiscal is in patients where it's not needed, all you're really doing is getting a growth factor rich cocktail in the disc, which then leaks out the little hole in the disc and goes in the epidural space. So you're doing a very invasive form of a platelet growth factor epidural, what we're talking about here today. So we would prefer in most patients to do the less invasive treatment of just injecting epidural. And for those patients who can't be helped, then going into the disc, which is more invasive. And there are different types of growth factor rich serums. There are releasates, simple lysates, and advanced lysates. And we'll talk about that uh, today. Uh, GF stands for growth factors. Growth factors are things that help your body stimulate repair. So let's talk about uh, a lysate versus a releasate. What is a lysate? Well, a platelet lysate, uh, to understand that, you gotta know a little bit about platelets. Platelets are these little things that help to clot blood. They also help to promote healing. They're filled with helpful growth factors that can help stimulate healing. And those are there are many different types of those growth factors. Platelets kind of work like a slow release pill where they release these growth factors over time. However, if you lyse or break open the platelet, i.e. a platelet lysate, you can get all the growth factors out at once. 
And this results in more, uh, a bigger growth factor hit all at once, almost like an immediate release pill. Now, there's something else out there called a releaseate, and that's a little different. Uh, you don't really see release aids out of outside of a few practices that are trying to make a lysate. And regrettably, in our research, internal research, a release aid is kind of a growth factor poor product. Uh, you make it, you try to make a release release aid by adding something that will form a clot in the platelets, and the platelets give up some of their growth factors into the serum, and then you inject the serum. It's just not a real efficient way to go to maximize growth factors in serum. We asked a number of years ago, could we make a much better platelet lysate than we were making? Uh, a simple platelet lysate is, is made by just throwing uh, platelet-rich plasma in the freezer. So was it possible to, to, to be better at this, to get much higher growth factor levels? And to figure that out, we looked at how efficiently we were lysing platelets. And believe it or not, we weren't that efficient in lysing platelets by just freezing the platelet-rich plasma. So we developed different techniques through the years. This is some of the, the data from the third generation showing how the third generation procedure dramatically uh, improved platelet lysis, meaning we had far less platelets after this procedure. And we're now in our fourth generation platelet lysate here at Regenix. So in conclusion, we could do better than just throwing it in the freezer overnight. And in fact, we not only looked at the number of platelets that were left with this new technique, but we actually looked at the growth factor content in these platelets. And what was really interesting was it was much, much higher in this third generation and then the fourth generation platelet lysate. And that translated very, very well to uh, biologic activity, meaning uh, all of those extra growth factors were really helping cells uh, do much better. So our focus then was using this for its anti-inflammatory effects, which we learned clinically, and for its high levels of what's called VEGF, which can promote new blood vessel formation, presumably around nerves or in the epidural space. And we figured this was perfect for epidural use. We knew that steroids were probably not really good for our patients when injected epidural, and the research of late has supported that. Now, why be concerned about epidural steroids? Obviously, you can look at the woman off there on the right who posted her picture on the internet. You can get that Cushing-type syndrome, but that's more rare. What we more commonly see is that the research is showing that Steroid use in general, even short-term steroid use, like an epidural injection, increases uh, bone loss in women. Uh, it really messes up your cortisol levels, which, which help to control a lot of things, including blood sugar and other, issue, uh, other functions. And it, it can increase infection risk. It can also uh, even increase the uh, percentage of failures in a joint replacement. So this is our registry data. Uh, through the Interventional Orthopedics Foundation that we've been tracking using this te technique for quite some time. So let's compare epidural steroid injections versus these platelet lysate epidurals. And these were given basically for the same patients who would normally get an epidural steroid injection. And we saw much better or improved function in those patients who got the platelet lysate injections versus an epidural steroid. Now, this is not a randomized controlled trial. This is registry data where two cohorts of patients are being followed prospectively in a registry. And we saw the same thing when it came to average pain, much better performance from the platelet lysate than we did the epidural steroids. And then this is a much larger data set of 662 patients. And this is how we got to those, those patients out of the registry. We basically culled them from about 2,000 total spine injections. And you can see here average numeric pain scores going down like we would expect in this large group after the injection. And uh, function improving again as we would expect in this uh, group.
Adverse events or side effects were very, very rare compared to epidural steroids. And in conclusion, you know, in a 34-site national uh, regenerative medicine practice, we see this working very well. We have some registry data, which is very promising, that we're going to be publishing now. And we don't have to really use the more invasive uh, disc injection because we have this great regenerative medicine tool that is less invasive through epidural. But in those patients who don't respond to this, we can always inject the disc if we need to. So thank you so much for watching and, and have a great day.